welcome back to another video it's a monday night i had no plans so i've just been going through all my gear at home tidying up and there i saw my abisco light 110 not used it for a long time so i've decided to bring myself out for a wild camp i'm just at fair homes car park and i've decided i'm gonna head up to alport castles i've been there before but it's been a while and i've never camped there so i'm gonna take you with me and uh yeah let's hope it's gonna be a nice camp weather's okay it is forecast for some rain later on and in the night but it's supposed to be okay in the morning so fingers crossed we avoid it right let's get cracking i already know i'm going to be too warm i might have to lose a jumper if i remember rightly the route coming up here out of Fairfield or Fair Homes car park is steep. But I remember now it just goes on and on and on. Up, up, up. Get a sweat on. Gotta lose this. Oh, oh that's better. Woo! I'll obviously talk through what gear I'm using in the video. But if you want to head over to my Instagram, link below. I have posted a picture of what I packed on a one night camping summer. And this is the bag that I brought today. So if you head down to my Instagram, again, I'll put the link below, but or you can just go to my main Instagram page and you can see a list of everything that I'm taking. And if you do come on this walk, we kind of follow the path and you see this little turn to the left hand side, walking trails and a sign for Lockerbrook Farm and this is where we're heading so it's kind of back on yourself and upwards look at the gorgeous weather some people camping over there must be a campsite oh the sun's beaming down beautiful as I say there is rain forecast for later but I think it's just through the night as long as it's gone by the time I pack up in the morning I don't care <laughs> got like a two kilometer stretch uphill and then I remember rightly when I get to the top of here we kind of take a bit of a right and we head towards Alport it's this fantastic rock formation it's like a, um, a tower a rock tower and you can climb to the top. I've got a lovely drone video on there from last year or the year before, circling as I was, going, as I was up there. Officially, you're not really supposed to fly a drone there, I don't think. Who says it was my drone? But yeah, you can climb to the top. You get some great views on all rocks all the way around. And obviously I need to try and find somewhere where I can pitch as well. Maybe a little bit sheltered as well with the wind. But my tent is good. The Abisco Light 1 is solid tent, so it can handle it. Just a couple of minutes later, as you can see, there's a little bit of a section here. This is the way we'll come back tomorrow. So we're taking a right turn, almost back on ourselves, and over the tops and over that style up there. Yeah. Wind's picking up. Warm wind, but still a strong wind. Woo. Windy. You probably can't even hear me, but this is where we'll be uh, going tomorrow. Over the water and back round. You probably can't even hear what I'm saying. I'll bring you back when I'm out of the wind. <laughs> It's about half past five in the evening or maybe a little bit later and it's rare for me this i'm an early riser i like to be out at five in the morning walking hiking full day hikes so it's a bit of a different one for me to uh <laughs> to come out just in the evening for a for a camp and in the middle i can see it but you probably can't make it out just here is the tower 
basically this this is like a little bit of a drop so we go over this ledge here all the way down to the bottom and then we can climb right up there I'm just gonna keep one eye open all the time for a wild camping spot as well as I said there's loads of little parts down here I mean I'd love to get on the ledge up there looking over but I'll have to see what the wind's like there's somebody else down there as well Whew. let me get the iPhone out so we can get a little bit closer Oh my god, that wins. So there we can see somebody else down below, and that's the tower over there. We can hold it still in the wind. And we can get on there, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Right, so I've just made my way back to the part where it comes down. Hopefully we'll get out of the wind here and you'll be able to see, or oh, be able to hear me. Yeah, so much better out of the wind down here. I could maybe pitch a little bit down here, but it's just not as fun. Yeah, there's loads of little places. I mean, a little bit lower down on one of these little tufts or at the top but it's it's five to six sunset's not until about eight o'clock tonight so we've got plenty of time so you think it's rocky now at the bottom some massive boulders look at that awesome There she blows. Just gonna make my way down here, and then we're gonna follow this round to the bottom, and then we're gonna make our way up to the top there. There's no easy way down, to be honest. Just gotta wing it any way you can, without breaking your neck. Look, if I whip the camera around now, just look at that. And yeah, really sheltered from the wind here. And you can make this a little bit easier as well. You can go up the backside excuse me, <laughs> you know, you can go up the back side of it, which is a lot less severe, but that's no fun. So we're gonna go up this steep bit. Obviously a little bit more tricky with the backpack on, because I've got all my gear, but we'll find a way, wiggle our way up. I mean, I hope you enjoy it with the 360 cram. I know it's not the clearest footage, but it gives you a unique view. Look at the birds. Yeah, it gives you a unique view. However, it does mean I need to climb it one-handed. If I can do it on Trifan, I'm damn sure I can do it on here. That'd be an awesome place to camp at the top there, but I'm just not too sure of the wind. It gets a little bit more vertical now. Clouds in the distance are looking a bit rainy, so I want to get up here and get down. <laughs> and even though it's early, get the tent pitched up. The last thing I'll be doing is setting it up when it's raining. It's not easy one handed. <laughs> Ooh. We're nearly there. Let's see what the wind's like up here. Boom, there we go. You won't see them on the GoPro, but I can see quite a few birds of prey. And you can hear them as well. Hopefully you can pick them up on the mics. And that is the exact reason why you're not allowed drones here. There's a bad cloud over there, but I think the cloud's coming in from behind. And if you turn the camera around, you can see it's quite dark. So I'm going to get myself down. We'll find a pitch. We'll get set up and have a little relax. <laughs> right. I'm not going to film coming down because I don't want to fall. So uh, I'll bring you back when I'm at the bottom. 
Relentless if yes. Blowing out my ass coming back up here. Oh it's just spitting a little bit. Come on. Please let me find a pitch when I get to the ground up there. I've noticed a little way up here, so I think I'm gonna take this steep path up here just to get on the top and have a little look to see if it's doable. I'll bring you back at the top. So I'm on top of that section now. Again, the ideal spot would be on the end, but it's just too windy. So I'm just trying to find a spot that's just sheltered from the wind a bit. Not easy. You also don't want to be in a divot in case it rains and you end up getting flooded in. We can go down there, it's just a bit boring, isn't it? Is it boring though? <laughs> Is it? Let me get down and have a look. I think I found my spot. I'm just in between these two valleys here. Look at the sky there. And I'm thinking just here, this little spot here. I've got a little table there. It's flat enough. My tent should go in there and I'm sheltered all round. Right, let's get this tent up before the heavens open. Right, let's go in there. Here we go. Nice and quick one. Oh, it's a bit close, but there we go. Look at that. Oh, it's on a bit of an angle, but she's tucked in nicely. Just need to sort this side out a little bit. Get it a little bit tighter. Round here, tighten these up, and we're good to go. Just a little tip. When you're setting your tent up and you've got all your tent bags and things, always have a little carabiner on your bag. That's what I do. And then you can hook your bag on and you can throw all your peg bags and things in there so you don't lose them. That's done. Let's get in the tent. I'm just going to tighten it up and then I'll get in and let's get settled. Made it before the rain as well. Get in. <laughs> it's a low one. Oh. God, I've not been in this tent for ages, I forgot how low it was. I don't know if you can see it, but all these, where the tire, the kind of look, hook, hooked on, I've kind of pulled them all through twice. So I've hooked them on, pulled them tight and hooked them around again just to make the inner a little bit tighter. But it's not too bad, considering I'm on a bit of a slope, it'll do. Let me get chilled and I'll show you what I've brought with me today. So we're in the Abisco Light 1, very, very solid tent good for any conditions and in there it's just my usual suspect so I've got my Thermarest Xtherm I've got a Trichology Comfort Pillow and I've not had this out since last year but this is my Ice Flame Flames Creed quilt just my summer quilt obviously my Flex Tail Pump up there acts as a light as well and you've got a few different settings on it again multi-function so all I've brought is I've just brought a little 600ml pot I've brought my X boil, which I'll show you because I'm going to use alcohol tonight. And to be honest, I'm only going to make a brew. This is the most unluxurious camp ever because it was a last minute thing. Got some carrots and hummus. Oh, yes. I've got a sandwich. I don't think I'll have these, but I've got some brunch bars as well. That's my fuel. I've got some oat milk for my tea and coffees. That's basically it. I think I'm just going to have my carrots and hummus <laughs> and I'm going to make a brew. The cloud's coming in now, but we're all right. We're settled. We're out the wind. The whole point of coming out tonight was just to get out. It's been ages since I've been out camping, so I wanted to come out somewhere I kind of know I've been before. Nice and easy. Yeah, and I'm glad I've come out. So we'll see what the uh, what the weather throws at us tonight. It is due to rain in the night. But as I say, it should be gone in the morning and then it comes back about 10 o'clock. So we've got a little window to get out. Okay, time for Agri, I think. Okay, so this is my stove for tonight. We've got a little sponge, got some more fuel, got 
some fuel there and we've got some fuel there shouldn't need much that's my little stove which i'll show you in a minute that was a little something for it to rest on but we've got a uh, got a nice piece of stone and this is the x boil so this just links together like this and we open this the other way around okay and this is the alcohol stove the great thing about this it's got these little attachments i've had this for ages it, it's so good and they just hook on they just hook on the sides as you can see hopefully you can see on the gopro so they just hook on the inside like so and then once you've got your stove lit put a little bit of alcohol put a little bit of alcohol in here which we'll do in a minute that goes over it and that becomes a little stand for your pot and it's nice and silent take about eight or nine minutes ten minutes to uh, to make a brew but what's the rush better than gas because it's good in all that in all weather and it's just quiet you know it's just nice and you're in no rush it's just enjoyable making a brew so yeah let's uh let me have an oaty coffee it's not the best time to have a coffee in the evening it's about half seven now but uh a fancy one let's do this shouldn't need too much and that's lit nice big coffee there we go about there good to go 10 minutes and you can probably see it's lit there and it just basically keeps it the uh, the right uh, the right amount off the flame and that'll take about 10 minutes and the coffee I've got for tonight I'm gonna try this um, no idea it's a coffee bag from Valley and Peak they threw it in with um, something I ordered off and whatever I ordered off them last time contact coffee so coffee bag I normally have Taylor's coffee bags which are quite good so yeah that and some oaty milk while my coffee's making Zolio as well probably think oh why are you taking it out to the Peak District you're not going far but do you know what I know I've, I need to do I need to do more I need to do a proper video on this next and they've got they've brought out some new features for this and it's fantastic but basically the reason i bring the zolio is <laughs> i've got no reception so yeah the zolio is like a gps track it's a gps tracker can track you i don't use it for that because i have my watch but you can use it for, for emergencies obviously if anything happens but the best thing is as well as long as it can see the sky um, this can um, you can send you know you can contact people you can send text I think it's about 500 characters as well so it's really really good um, so I can let Kay know where I am um, I didn't tell her I was coming camping today and it's half past seven I've not spoke to her I've got no reception and she is she's already got me added on Zolio so I'm gonna get this connected send her a quick message on the app hopefully she gets it and uh, yeah it's brilliant so I'll never I'll never ever go without that I've always got it with me I don't have it on during the day but if there is an emergency I can just turn it on so yeah brilliant oh. <laughs> it's lovely and calm here now it makes me wish I was up there now but I know as soon as I go up there it's windy I can see the uh, I can see it buffeting on the tops I just heard my Zolio beep as well, so I'm hoping my messages have gone through. I've just sent a couple of messages to Kay. Hopefully she gets them. But what it can do, basically, it can send them, as long as it can see the sky, it'll send them over satellite, or if it picks up a mobile phone network, it'll send them over that, or Wi-Fi, it's really clever. <clears throat> There's absolutely jack-all signal around here, so... Oh, there we go, it looks like we're boiling. Perfect. Now the benefits of this as well, there it is, and you can dust, blow it out. The fantastic. I always advise, you've, you've got things like transiers where you pour the alcohol in and it's just like loose fluid. Now I make my own as well, um, but I always put fire resistant stuff in them. Either you can, it's not cotton wool, it's like this fireproof stuff, you put that in or that. 
and the benefit with that is it soaks up the alcohol if you turn it upside down the fluid won't leak you're not going to knock it over in your tent and you can blow it out as well whereas a trangia you've, you've got to starve it let's bang that in there Little titanium spoon does it get any better than this Oh, do you know what? It's been so long <laughs> since I've taken my stove on a on a hike. I used to love getting up high, making a coffee every single time. I love my coffee, um, and I've not taken my, my stove out for about honestly about a year. So this is going to be a regular thing now, every single time. Something about just sitting down and having a lovely hot drink, relaxing. <laughs> with your carrot and hummus <laughs> no steak and um <laughs> no steak on this channel yeah there will be okay i'm gonna have a little relax for half an hour um till about 10 past 10 past eight and then we'll get up and we'll see if there's going to be a, a, a sunset somewhere as you may be able to see it's just starting to rain the sky is still looking good, but yeah, it's just starting to rain, which is forecast. I'll just show you one more look around the tent and I'm going to get in it. Does she look good? All nice and tight. Got a great little spot here. Tucked away. And if it rains, we should be okay. Does anyone else love it when you're in your tent as well and you just listen to the rain? Oh, nothing better. As long as it's not like that in the morning, there's nothing worse than waking up with it battering it down knowing you've got to get out. Especially in a small tent like this where you can't, you've got no room. And I've only got a really light waterproof jacket. I didn't even bring my proper waterproof, so let's hope we're all right. I'm gonna batten down the hatches and have a little rest. It's lovely just listening to the wind and a little bit of the rain on the tent. I must admit though, I do I mean I, I do love this tent, but I forgot how low it is. So you're really close. You know, if you if you're claustrophobic, this isn't the best tent. However, there's loads of room in it. I mean there's loads of room with ways in here. You've got a really good vestibule size, you could easily cook in here. If I turn it round, look at all the room there. There's loads of room in the vestibule. However, I like to put you know, I like to put my bag in my tent with me. with me. I don't like it out there for bugs and, you know, if it gets wet in the night. Whatever the winds th throw at it tonight, it's a four season tent. Absolutely fine. That's why I like it. Very cloudy outside, claggy. So I don't think I'm going to get a sunset. But if the weather's crap, then I think what I'll do, I'll just relax, get an early night, and then I'll see you in the morning. And obviously I'll bring you back in the night if there's any drama. I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of rain. Again. This is the last video before the end of tonight. My watch has just gone off to say sunset in five minutes. I ain't getting up in this. <laughs> so I'm gonna battle down the hatches and I will see you in the morning. Morning, we're up. Oh, it was a blustery night. Very, very windy, even down in this dip. So yeah, I'm so glad I made the decision not to go to the top and look at the weather. It's beautiful. I did get up for sunrise, but it was awful outside. It was windy, it was cloudy, it was thick clouds and blowing over really quick. So um, I went back to sleep. I used the opportunity to have a little sleep. So now it's beautiful. I'll take you up to the top of the hill and we'll have a look at what the Peak District has to offer us this morning. Yeah, see the sunrise is over there, so that's probably why it was still dull this morning. So I'm basically packed away everything in the in the tent now. I've just got to dry the tent off with my spongy, pack it away. 
then we'll basically hike back to the car. I'll take you on the journey, see what there is to see. But for now, we'll do the bit that nobody enjoys putting the tent away. These sponges, if you haven't got one and you camp, what are you doing? These are the ultimate thing for drying your tent. I have loads of these. I actually have one in my um, hygiene kit or if I go anyway, anywhere, or even if I go wild swimming to dry yourself, fantastic. Obviously I don't use the same one for my tent, but for getting off condensation of your, t as you t off your tent, which I haven't got much of, they are the best. Honestly, they soak up so much water. They're brilliant. Better than a chamois leather dust. Um, moving the water around, get one of these. Look at that. Tent perfectly dry. And the only trick with these is, you need to keep them, you need to keep them damp or they go crispy. So that's why I always keep them in one of these bags, Ziploc bag, to take the air out. Live to fight another day. And there we go, leave no trace, just a flat piece of grass where I was last night. Now, I need to find my way out of here. I'm not sure I'm going to go up, I think I'm going to cut, climb up back up over the tops again, and we'll go over the other side, and then we'll pick up the trail, and I'll take you with me. Let's go. Well, it's windy up here. <laughs> oh, imagine I'd have stopped up here last night. A nightmare. I'll be honest with you, I think we've got to go off a drop here. If I'm not sure, I'll head my way back to Alport Castle, the tower, and then come down from there. But it's kind of this direction I want to be going in. Yeah, I've had to head my way back. I'm going to come down here, we're going to head towards Alport Castles, and we'll come left. And I think that's the way back. A little bit slippy as it was rainy yesterday. Oh, I'm back on the path. Perfect. I'm right over there, over that path. But if I remember rightly, this, this way is really quite nice and you go past a little bit of a lake over Snake Road for a nice walk round, so it should be good. But I kind of remember this from last time. So even though I'm tracking myself on my Garmin, I do have my map on there, I'm trying to just remember the route more fun this way. So we'll just make our way along here and try and join the path. Much better. This here, if you can see it, it's a great little jacket. It's super light and super thin. I forget the name of it now. I'll link it below, but it's just a wrap jacket super thin pertex as well so it'll uh, it'll shed off a little bit of water but it's windproof so today i'm not cold but this will keep you warm still um but it'll just keep the wind off so it's better than the the hoodie that i've got on that i've taken off and that's one of my favorite hoodies the montane jam it's great only cheap let's go yeah over this barbed wire onto the fence and then I, th I remember it being right along there. Great landscape. Gorgeous views as the sun just hitting the fields in the distance.
on the little bridge there. The effort it took to do that. <laughs> up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> Secrets behind the footage. As you can see, I've lost the jacket. The material can be a little bit sweaty on you when it's warm, so yeah, I've had to lose that. And you can just see through there. Uh, just to the right, right there. That's the Alport Castles we were. And all them mounds up there. All that, that bit in the middle, that's where we, uh, that's where we camped. So if you've got any fears about wild camping, my only advice, is to go out and do it. Obviously, you know, I offer guided hikes and I can offer a camp as well, if you fancy that. If you don't want to go on your first one alone, drop me a message, we can uh, try and sort something out. But what you've got to do, you've just got to go. If you're unsure about your gear, maybe go to a campsite. You know, try not to use any facilities or anything like that, but use your gear and if there's a problem, you know, you've got some facilities there, but you just got to go and do it. You know, first one, don't pitch high up, pitch nice and sheltered. But take what you've got, don't go out buying loads of expensive gear, you might not like it. Or to be honest, everybody's different. I can give you advice. Other YouTubers, Paul Mesner, good friend of mine, uh, great YouTuber. Everyone's got loads of advice on what gear they use, but it's different for everyone. So all I can say is, go out, you'll probably take a heavy backpack with stuff, loads of stuff in it. But from your first camp, and certainly from your second and third, you'll realise what worked well, what doesn't. Were you warm enough? Did you miss something? Was your tent high enough? You know, all these little little quirks and over time you can upgrade your gear. Just been following this path for about 15 minutes and you'll see this little sign here. Snake Pass and Alport Bridge. And that's the way I'm heading. Beautiful morning. Reminds me of my long distance hikes when I used to get up early and just this would be me on my own for 10 hours. <laughs> right, let's just get over this quickly. Ooh. And that's where we've just been. Alport Valley. So we came like kind of from over this direction and over the tops. Oh no, we came from here and then we've come round here. I think we've come, yeah, we've come round here, and that's where we are now. And this here is Snake Pass, and we're going straight over. We're going to go up and around. Look at that. How gorgeous. There is a path, there is a bridge taking you over there. But I don't think this is too deep. We'll have a look. Is it? It's fine. Give a good test for the boots. Even though I shouldn't be splashing it because it's going all in my shoes, but there we go. But for now, it's a pleasant morning. It's nice and quiet. I'm just going to take in the views and enjoy this walk. So early in the morning, yet so warm already. This is how you should start your mornings, it's beautiful. We're going to be crossing over Snake Pass again. You can see a car just crossing over now, white, white van. And we're making our way back up. Eventually we need to get back onto the tree line up there. That's where we're heading. <laughs> a little bit of a slog up. This is where I actually wish I did have my poles. Push on. This path does follow round and wiggle round, but I remember rightly, if you just cut up this right bit, it's steeper, but it's quicker. Yeah, as you can see, that path wiggles round for everywhere. So we'll just take this direct route up the side. <laughs> I'll bring you back at the top. <laughs> Back 
on the path. And we just follow this for about a mile until we get to, I think it's called Lockwood Farm where we were yesterday. This is the path I've just been walking up now. And I'll show you where, I'll show you where we are. Yesterday, when we came up here, and the le and we took that split over to the top to Alport Castles. If you want to copy the route, it is in the link below. You can just do it as a obviously one walk, but if you want to split it up with the camp, I'll try and create it as one full route for you. Another couple of early morning hikers here. Let's go and say hello to them. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Are you heading to Alport Castles or yeah. windy? <laughs> Blow the cobweb to <laughs> Oh yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Have a lovely day. And yourself now. <laughs> Love it when you see other hikers. I saw him really blowing coming up this hill because it is quite steep going up here. Well, not steep, but it's just, it's uh, it just goes up and up for quite a while. So we're just going to carry on along this path now and then down all those steep sections back to the car. I won't film coming back. I'll pick this up when we're back at the car and let's check how far we've come on the route. Back to the car. So all in all, it was 15 kilometers there and back. Good little route. And as I said before, it's in the comments below. If you like the video, please do drop a like. I'm pleased to say we've hit a thousand subscribers. Awesome achievement, I'm so pleased. But the more, if you know, if you watch this video and you like it, if you just drop a like, it just helps more people see it. And if you're not subscribed, please consider it. it doesn't cost you anything, it's free and you'll just get notified of any new videos. And for all my existing subscribers, thank you. You're part of the lucky thousand. <laughs> so thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned. I'm not too sure what's coming next, but drop a comment below if you want to see what tent you want to see me out in next. And I'll see you in a future video. Peace. <laughs>